you saturate us and we ask that you do it for your name's sake. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. So you join me in about five minutes. John chapter 14, 23 to 26. Jesus answered and said unto him, If a man love me, he will keep my words, and my father will love him, and will come unto him, and make our abode with him. He that loveth me not, keepeth not my sins. And the word which ye hear is not mine, but the Father's which sent me. These things have I spoken unto you, being yet present with you. But the Comforter, and this is my key verse, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name. He shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. If you begin to study from the 24th verse, you will find out that Jesus in communication was attempting to create a synchrony between obedience and love. So that in human interactions we are taught or it is written that there are many love languages. But Jesus is advertising to the one who had advanced a question towards him that my love language, in other words, my proof of love is that you obey my commandments. What it means is that when Jesus wants to test your love for him, what he does is that he speaks to you. Are you with me? So, I want us to understand the speakings of God in a whole new way. And that's not where I'm going. I'm just trying to reveal that to you. That this ability to hear from him, and that's actually secondary. For the believer, foundationally, your communication with God is by fellowship with the written word. That you can read scriptures means that you are being set up in the spirit for a love test. So that every time life is lived, positions taken, contrary to what is written, what it equates in the realms of the Christ is that you don't love him. So the disobedient can attempt to sing to him, I love you, I love you. There is a way he hears. Are you with me? In hearing, there is what is heard and there is how it is heard. So I can say, let's go. And it can be offensive. It may be, let's go to buy ice cream. Which it means the end of the let, let, let's go is good. But if I say let's go, can I say, ah, ah, is it because you are going to pay? I just said let's go. It means even though what was heard was accurate, it was to sponsor a motion in the direction of a pleasant end. How it was said would also affect how it was heard and it could become offensive. So when you say, I love you, Jesus, Jesus is saying, I hear it, but there's a way I hear. What I hear is by obeying my word. And that there is a gift that those who obey his word will have. Now, everyone here who is saved has received the advance 
of that gift. Remember that you got saved how? By faith, right? And how does faith come? It comes by hearing. Hearing by the word of God. It means that when the word of God was said to you, there was a way you obediently responded. And it was because of that obedient response that the Holy Spirit relocated into you. Because what he said, give me verse 25. Help me. Um, so what verse is that now? Okay. No. It's the verse that speaks about making our board in him. Yes. If a man love me, that's 23, he will keep my words and my father will love him. And we will come unto him and make our board with him. So the movement of the Holy Spirit, who is the person that advertises God's presence with you, was activated because you responded appropriately to his word. However, you see, what the Holy Spirit will be to every one of us ultimately will be different and it will now be built. I mean that the, the tangibility of his abode with us will differ. It's not a different Holy Spirit, but the outworking of his being with us because that abode with, I mean that's being with or abiding with, is not an end at the first installment. There are dimensions of the Holy Spirit that a man who sustains obedience we see revealed in them as proof that he is with me. And where sustained obedience is not, it means that a man's perception of the Holy Spirit will be limited and if your perception of the Holy Ghost is limited, your profiting from the Holy Spirit will also be limited. It's not five minutes yet. Will also be limited. So that's one side. Give me my last verse. That's the 26. That's where I'm really going. The Bible says, but the comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name. And it means the Holy Spirit comes in the character of the Christ. Two, he comes in the authority of the Christ. He shall teach you all things. There are two cardinal ministries of the Holy Spirit that are advertised in this verse and you must know them, not mentally, but you must yearn to come into a tangible experience of these two cardinal ministries. I can't hear yourself. The first is that he will teach you all things. Somebody say all things. Meanwhile, the word all, the, the phrase all things does not mean everything. So the teaching ministry of the Holy Spirit is unlimited but is limited. All things. All things suggest that there is a list on God's curriculum. And everything that is captured in that curriculum or for everything that is captured in that curriculum, the Holy Ghost has a license to teach you. The things that he cannot teach or the things that he will not teach are the things that are not on your curriculum. And I need to hammer this because in the pursuit of the knowledge of God, there are side gates that a man can enter into. So that you begin to ask questions that don't have answers on the cor or in the curriculum of the Holy Spirit. I can't remember what question, but somebody asked me one this week. And I asked him a second question. What does the Bible give as an answer to your question? He will keep searching till Jesus comes. Because God is not interested in the subject that that young man is raising. Something just came up in his heart and he feels it's a pathway to pursue. Meanwhile, if attention had been paid to scriptures, because I don't spare people, I tell people, I, I know that question is a question, 
because you have not been reading your Bible. If you have been reading your Bible, you will have stumbled on the boundaries in scriptures so that if that question comes, you can use the word of God to judge your thoughts. And you will find out that even though it sounds spiritual, what we call the spiritual is wider than the realms of the Holy Ghost. Are you with me? It will have been, it will have sufficed for scriptures to say, if any man be in the realm of the spirit, is a new creature. We had to be gifted a boundary within a boundless dimension. So Christ is boundless. It means you will be researching him. Even when you see him, you still be researching him. But you see, he has walls. So you see that the progressions of Christ was first Christ the man. A man has boundaries. Your body, right? And then he became Christ the body. So he's still used as a body. And then it becomes Christ the civilization. And then it becomes Christ the offices. Are you with me? Those are the four core areas in trying to unravel the knowledge of Christ. But it's a boundless thing. Like your human body. Do, do we have any medical students here? Okay, nothing. Uh, no medical students here. Okay. Oh, you're studying medicine. That's good. That's good. So, that's another one. So, we have nurses. You don't know how mysterious your bodies are. They know a lot more. So when you see them going to class, what they are going to unravel is this body that you are used to. You should sit them down and say, what's your wahala? Is it not to wake up, stand, walk, do all of that? But it's for that same reason that if you, you put your foot down and you feel a pain, you don't have the wisdom to be able to unravel why that pain is there. That's what they go to study. There may be a thousand things. I was sitting with my dad one day and he was trying to prepare someone for professional exams. You know the simple question? Daddy held a, a stethoscope. I said, can you give me 20 things, 20, uh, 20 clinical presentations that will require the use of this stethoscope? I thought it was a simple question. So the person attempted one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. By the time he got to the twelve, that is said, good. Let's look at the twelfth one. Tell me twelve things that can make somebody experience that number twelve. Oh, so the guy now got into a pool. Attempted one, two, three. I think he got to five or six. That is said, good. So that six will require a surgical procedure. What's the surgical procedure? Good. What are the process parts you can take? The way you shook your head is the way the guy shook his head. <laughs> you don't know your body. And if you don't know a body that you bathe every day, it means your spirit is more mystical. That's why you need help. You can assume the contents of your spirit. You can assume it. That you are like this. So you need help. You need help. Somebody say, I need help. That's one of the areas of mastery the Holy Spirit is bringing me to. To be able to bring people to an end of themselves. I'm wise, but I'm, 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 not, I'm, I'm not too wise. I'm taking you somewhere. So the first thing the Holy Spirit will do is that He will teach you all things. If you comply with the Holy Spirit, your life will be a class that never ends. Whether you're actively studying scriptures or you're just in normal meditations, he will not stop teaching you. That's one of the cardinal reasons why he is sent to you in the name of the Christ. Jesus walked away from his teaching curriculum because he knew that what God required us to know was going to be known. He trusted in the competence of the Holy Ghost. If there are things you don't know, it's because you are not a good student. And one of the signs of a bad student is to live in the realm of assumption. That's the lowest level of knowledge. Assumption. I know you have seen somebody drive a car for long. So in your mind, in your mind, if we give you a key, you can drive. I know you can do it on this road. But the day you can drive, we will send you to your on old road. Just drive to your and bring the car back safely. Without the testimony that at the point you abandoned the car, ran into the bush, 
or you drove yourself into the bush, just go and come back. When a trailer is facing you, what do you do? They don't teach it in, in driving school. Everything on God's curriculum is designed to be taught by the Holy Ghost. So that's one of the cardinal ministries of the Spirit. And that's what we want to explore. But there's a second one that we need to look at. The Bible says that it will also bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said to you. And that's strong. If it escaped the lips of Jesus, if it escaped the Bible, this was the verse of scripture that delivered me from cramming scriptures. This verse. If it ceases to be a writing of King James and becomes a word that Jesus said to me, I will remember it when I need it. It's not wrong cramming the Bible, but cramming and knowing are not the same thing. No? For many years, I looked, and if you've spoken to my biological father before, you would testify to this. He's so much of a medical doctor, but I don't, you can't, he draws his inferences from scriptures, and sometimes it's overwhelming. He wants to talk to you for 10 minutes and sometimes he's using almost 15 verses of scripture and he's so sharp and I'm wondering, what is this about? Then one day I stumbled here and I found out if Jesus speaks to you, the Holy Spirit is licensed to remind you. It means you must approach the Bible in a day that the word of God is being derided. That's what people have come to say it's not the Bible, it's not the word of God. It's that the one that Paul wrote is not the word of God. It was only, it's only the red letter in scriptures. Don't be fooled. If we keep striding the book, we'll become irresponsible. Are you with me? It, it was a book that was balanced before it was offered. The Bible ceases to be an authority over the life of the believer when the believer can determine what is legit inside it or not. The reason why we are bound by a constitution and it takes long to change the constitution until recently. Uh, you can sing the national anthem. The reason why it takes long and you need legislators, you need this one sign and that one sign is because when we arrive at that legal code, one of the first grounds upon which our citizenship is ascertained is, ascertained is that we submit to the authority of the constitution. When we begin to query what is written, which is supposed to be law to us, it means that we have gone on a path of rebellion. The problem is that we don't always call it the name that it is. We think that we are on a journey of revelation. No, we are on a journey of rebellion. And what is being spread across the land is to waste a generation. You find out that the generation who is marketing this thing has found certain things in God. They found certain things in God submitting to the authority of this thing. And as their seasons of expression begin to fade, they begin to advertise to a new generation that you can, you can receive the word of God sectorially. How would I know the mandate that brings me into the economy of God without the Pauline epistles? How will I come into the consciousness of the organic nature with which the Holy Spirit functions? See, maybe in your minds you think I'm, I'm doing a person um, attack. You found out that I've been quiet on many issues. It's because I am praying for those who are propounding these things. This is not a battle of persons. This is Satan trying to, to mislead our priests. And as we journey on Kairos, I will show you one of the signs that the body has got into a Kairos is that leadership strays. Every time the body of Christ gets to a Kairos, we're about to enter a promised land, Satan begins to sponsor misguided thoughts in the hearts of those who represent headship. Because in that day, one 
wrong decision in headship will cause it really. So what we need is prayers. Your opinion is on Facebook, but you know how many people are following you. Many of those who liked it are not following you. They just understand how depressing it is to write something and nobody likes it. Sometimes they didn't read it. Because you write and it's not two minutes. And if you have a lot of people, you have seen 50 likes. What you wrote is about 200 lines. Even the academics, they don't read that fast. Are you with me? So how did they finish it? I learned in a hard way. I was coming from Lagos. I sat behind a woman. And you see, this is the way she was reading Facebook. Boom. Like, 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 like. And I was like, hey, these people will have been happy that somebody has embodied their opinions. No, she's just trying to do emotional help. When I have time, sometimes I check this thing. Somebody writes something that I know that God is not happy with. And sometimes when God is not happy with what you are writing, if he loves you, he will take followership away from you. So that only you will derail. You won't go to any much length in recovering people. And you will not be guilty. Sometimes when I see one like, I try to check. It's the guy that wrote, that liked himself. Oh, you don't know people like personally. He finishes writing. He steps back and says, oh, good, 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 good. And then he likes it himself. He's drawing from Genesis. spirits that have been sent to scatter what God is doing by bringing all kinds of strange stuff is to make the next generation start from the beginning again you see the contentions across churches it was first cross minister now denominations are in flames oh you don't know okay you are pretending like you don't know big denominations are in flames we thought it was going to... You know what it means to implode? It means that it's not an attack from outside. It's inside. Pastors coming to bring witness against men with his wild, impeccable character. Satan is doing something serious. And if we don't understand what the battle is about, we'll be at each other's throats instead of standing together and fighting. Anyways, that's for another day because we may need to address some of these things in robust fashion. There's a call to prayer over the church in our nation. There's a call to prayer because stronger than scriptures, media now gives a lead to the body of Christ. Someone's are built around things on YouTube. Someone's are built around things on Facebook. It means the Holy Spirit no longer leads. is bleeding a movie has almost scattered the body of Christ somebody wants to do an apostle suddenly tomorrow because he thinks that, that that movie is a fight between the apostolic and the prophetic we don't know that when we stand into that kind of battle the shape of the apostolic and the prophetic what's the outlook for the church foundations what we are trying to do is scatter the ground and if the foundation be destroyed, what are we building? What are we building? It means, th th these are two offices that are given, even in modern times, given the, um, the, the, the role to balance the perspectives of God. So the evangelist goes out and brings people into an imbalanced perspective. Because what the prophets brought, they had longer heads with the apostles. Can you see how my, me and my brother relate? That's what it's supposed to be. Ha. And Jesus has given us the principle of survival. A house that is divided against itself. You see, there are some, of, there are some who are not part of us. But even those who are part of us. The Bible says the house will not stand. And it's not just for worldly kingdoms. If the kingdom of God is divided against itself, it will fall. We need to be able to name people accurately in the body. 
my strange brother, my false brother, the fake brother. The fake brother is not one of us. Are you with me? But Paul referred to Satan as false brethren, and we may need to study what a false brother is. It does not mean that does not have God life in him. It just means that his current state is being expressed as an enemy of the Christ. He is not beyond recovery. If there is a man to pray, Satan has asked of you that he may sift you as wheat. There are many who have been sifted as wheat. What was Jesus' position? I have prayed for you that your faith will not fail. There are many who were designed to strengthen the body in the day of their recovery that will not recover because they have no intercession. May God help us. Now, what I'm doing is just running around the things that he has said. The things that he has said. Everything Jesus says to you, the Holy Spirit is licensed to make you remember. Somebody say amen. amen. Now, in trying to now look deeper into the communications of the Lord, these words that he brings forth that we must obey as a show of love, we find out that these communications are designed to bring to us the knowledge of many things. Many things. You see it in that verse too. All things whatsoever I have said. It means when Jesus speaks, he's speaking of many things. He speaks to cover his curriculum. A few years ago, I did a study on Revelations 2 and 3, and I found out that there was, there were different streams of communication in the way Jesus spoke to each of the churches. So you find out that when he wants to speak to a church, okay, let's analyze one of the letters, Revelation chapter 2. Okay. So you see, unto the angel of the church of Ephesus, it means when Jesus speaks here, what he does is that he first identifies the recipient. He speaks in an affectionate way that establishes a knowing. He speaks to establish the consciousness that he recognizes you. So it's not wrong, Daniel, to hear as he speaks to you through his words, say, my son Daniel. It can be Daniel. Sometimes he's my son. And sometimes he uses more operational um, language, my servant. And that's the pattern we've seen here. It's to bring you closer because now you know that he knows you. So he speaks to establish the consciousness that he recognizes you. Two, unto the angel of the church of Ephesus write, this thing saith he, the next thing he does when he has identified you, is that he begins to introduce himself to you by revelation. Are you with me? He says, this thing saith he that holdeth the seven stars in his right hand and walketh in the midst of the seven golden candlesticks. One of the things you find out is that though that first introduction is the same for everyone, establishing consciousness of recognition, the revelation of Jesus to each of the churches was different. It is because, I said in the beginning, that these revelations are actually invitations into a dimension of himself. So if the Lord comes and finds out, Bolu, that there is an area of darkness that you are trying to grapple with, he comes and says, Bolu, my son. Or do you like him to say my son now? I am the light of the world. If you stay with the Lord's introductions to you in every season, it is a pointer to what he has discerned is wrong with you. So, if we analyze this letter, ah, I don't want to do these things. If we analyze this letter, he says, this thing saith he that holdeth the seven stars in his right hand and who walketh in the midst of the seven golden candlesticks. Uh, by way of... Um, Inquiry, 
who can predict what the problem of the Ephesian church is? There are two problems that are advertised in this revelation of the Christ. Anybody? Just raise your hand. Oh, yeah, now. Is my wife willing? You don't want to? Okay. Pastor. Pastor, the last is skipped. Okay. What do you think? Now, in holding the seven stars in his hand, he advertises government over the leadership of the church because these seven stars are the human angels, like the bishops of all of these churches. So he's trying to make the church know that a day of apostasy has been occasioned in leadership. There are things that are wrong with the church as we be, continue to read. There are things that are wrong with the church, but the, the problem has been traced to the leadership of the church. It means that these churches have, the leaders of these churches have not recognized that there's one who governs them. So he introduces himself in government that the true leaders of the church are held in my right hand. They are captured within the framework of my authority. Two, who walketh in the midst of the seven golden candlesticks? These seven golden candlesticks depict the church. Each of the candlesticks is a church expression. It means that a day of, um, of um, doing good witness to the presence of the Christ had been occasioned. When people come to church, the ability to sense him has gone. And so the things that they do are done without the consciousness that he's here with us and is trying to say, if it is a church, I walk in the midst of it. I may be silent, but I'm walking to a praise, I'm walking to reward, I'm walking to do all of that. You think I'm far from you, you have not given me my place, but I'm here. So each of his introductions of himself advertises what is lacking. We'll see if the things I'm saying are true. Let's go on. You know, I didn't study it. I'm just moving as it's leading. I know thy works. How did he know? It was not a report. He walks in the midst of them. And thy labor and thy patience. So you see, after introducing himself, he goes into communications that advertise commendations. Commendations as a result of appraising them. I know that works. It means I have, the only English word I know is, okay, let me use a softer word. I was going to use the word intercourse. I have fellowshiped with thy works. And I've explained to us that in a church like this, if Jesus says, I know thy works, he's not just speaking on general terms. In this choir, if Jesus says, I know thy works, John, what he's saying is, in the midst of the, sounds of everybody I can isolate your sound and judge it is that not scary that we clap for the ushers and maybe we should let's clap for the ushers and we've been sanitation unit you know we have not been able to identify who soils the toilet because every time you soil it somebody quickly goes there and cleans it are you with me but Jesus knows those who soil the toilet. He knows them by name. And while we can say, okay, uh, um, dutiful unit, maybe we'll give them a plaque that they are hanging in their corner there. Ushering and sanitation unit. Jesus can isolate the works of everybody in that unit. That even though they were rewarded as a whole, he will reward each of them based on what they have done. Behold, I come it, and my reward is with me to give unto every man, not every group. According to what his work shall be. So you can't hide under a cloud. In the day of gifts, it, you will be isolated. I know thy works. Let me go fast now. Thy labor and thy patience, and how thou canst not bear them which are evil. So you have an, a, an aversion for, for evil, a hatred for evil. And as try them which say the apostles and are not. It means they were fake apostles as far back as Ephesus. 
and has found them liars. Let's go on. And has borne. You've gone through pain. You have moved on. And has patience. And for my name's sake has labored and has not fainted. So you think it's a, it's a perfect church. Nevertheless, I have somewhat against thee. So there was a gap. Because thou hast left thy first love. So, if you walked into the church in Ephesus, what will you see about them based on where we started reading from? It was a church that was not obeying the words of Jesus. Because that's proof of love. Are you with me? When they started following Jesus, they obeyed him, but now they've outgrown it. In spite of patience, so it's possible to hate a false prophet. It's possible to hate a false apostle. It's possible to hate a false pastor, a false evangelist. And still not retain your first love. Jesus now says, so that's appraisal, commendations, convictions unto repentance. So it comes to verse 5. He now says, remember therefore from where thou hast fallen. This is an admonition. And repent and do the first works or else the next one is a threat. So if you think Jesus is threatening people, read Revelations 2 and 3. Repent and do the first works. Once you see or else is threatening them and his threats are not empty threats. Or else... I will come unto thee quickly and I will remove thy candlestick. It means you will become totally dead to my presence. If they continue attending church there, it's no longer a church of Jesus. And if a spirit sees that they are gathering, after a while, a spirit will join them and will become the new object of worship. I will remove thy candlestick out of his place. It means in that place, God will no longer be known because the church is no longer known except thou repent. So that, those are the threatenings of the Lord. He does threaten people. Let's close it. You find out that the threat is just one verse. So it doesn't stay there too long. So it goes back and I'm sure they will have been crying. He now draws them back by saying, but thou hast this, that thou hatest the deeds of the Nicolaitans, which I also hate. Let's go on. He that that can hear, that's another admonition. Let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. The last thing is that he now begins to motivate them. To him that overcometh, will I give to eat of the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise of God. So, there are two things you will see. The introductions of the Christ and the rewards of Christ are his person. He is that tree of life. That dwells, it means he's the center of God's kingdom. He's the one who gives life. He is also the one who walks. Are you with me? So, what we see in each of these letters, and you may need to study them. I think we have sermons around this. Yes, I don't know what the topics are, but I know we have a sermon. I'll, I'll think about it. It's part of my deleted notes. So, but I know I preach something like this. You, it will help you. In studying this, what, what is studying these letters, that's what I mean, will help you to do, is that you'll be able to judge when Jesus speaks to you. Because there are things that the Lord says to people and other people say, he doesn't talk like that. These verses give us a picture of how he talks, not just what he says. You are not doing well, you are not doing well. And then you go to your friend, say, I was praying and the Lord said, I'm not doing well. I say, no. God is too compassionate to say that. He doesn't want to hurt your feelings. He can't tell you that you are not doing well. Well, the Bible says that he used to tell people. Say, God said, if I don't do this thing, you will exchange me. Say, no, no, no. It doesn't exchange people. You, you'll be relevant for life. Are you, are you not? Are you not his child? How can he forsake the a mother? Even if a mother forsakes, he will not forsake you. He threatens people with a break of fellowship. He talks like that. Whisper to your neighbor. Don't say, Apostle said, say, say that the Bible says that he can break fellowship with lampstands. What it means is that Jesus can, can walk away from a congregation.
they will worship for 52 Sundays. They will sing his praise, but it will not be known. They may still have miracles because that's a general reality. There are few things that cannot be replicated in the realm of the spirit. And I shared one during the week. I said that the conviction unto righteousness is an assignment that no other spirit will take outside the Holy Spirit. So when you have seen every other thing happen, check for conviction unto righteousness, which is conformity unto the image of the Christ. If you don't find out, then it's suspect, proof order. Amen. Now, these letters are not exhaustive in trying to advertise the speakings of the Christ. One way in which I can summarize, however, is that these were communications of the will of God for these churches. There is what you are, but there is what I designed you to be. And I'm trying to talk you into becoming what I want you to be. So they were will communications. John was privileged to receive page upon page that advertised the will of God for these individual churches. And it's in the will that I want to arrive at. Somewhere I'm going now. You are confused. Raise up your hand. Raise it too. At least you understand how he speaks now. Good. All right, so let's move on. So this communication to these different churches advertised what we call the multifaceted fashion. That's the many-sided design of the speakings of the Lord. But on the whole, what was advertised here is the knowledge of his will. And as believers, we must understand that one of the strains of communications that we begin to come into when we become saved is that the will of God is the, that the will of God is demystified. The man who is not saved does not know God's will. But if you study Ephesians chapter 1, I think that should be the ninth verse, eight or nine. Help me. Eight or nine. Okay, nine. So let's read from seven. Let's read from 7. In whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, according to the riches of his grace. Next verse. Wherein he had abounded towards us in all wisdom and prudence. Verse 9. Having, it's not just going to, having made known unto us the mystery of his will according to his good pleasure which he had proposed in himself. So there was something that God prepared in himself. He didn't call a meeting. But that thing was sealed. And when we came into the economy of God, after we had received redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins, the next thing he did was to unlock the seals so that you can know for sure what the will of God is for you and for the areas that he has placed under your jurisdiction. This will is known by the educations as of the Spirit. So the Holy Spirit begins to teach you. He begins to teach you. The Bible says he searches all things, yea, even the deep things of God. So when he searches, his search is not an end. Like you go on Google, you type, or oh, this, this AI on, uh, this meta AI on WhatsApp, you type your name. If you think you are great, type your name. And then we find out that it's only Facebook that knows you. It means that you add work to your work. If you are Yoruba, you understand that. Uh -huh. Or you add work to your work. Uh -huh. Are you with me? Good. The end of a search is a finding. And what the Holy Spirit does for the believer is that when he searches all things, even the deep things of God, he presents reports of his search. That's how we come into knowledge. So it's an educational system that his searching sustains. This educational system that teaches his will, I'm trying to read um, because of time, is also the same educational system that sponsors the creation 
of the purposes of God, the creation of persons, the creation of things, and by that I mean experiences, even the graces that we work with. So the will of God is advertised by the teaching ministry of the Holy Spirit. But you see, what that teaching ministry reveals to us is the reason why God is doing what he's doing. It's the reason why God is creating something. It's the reason why God is establishing a move. You can know why. What is popular is the acts of God. His ways are beneath his acts. And until you master his ways, you will misuse his acts. Are you with me? If God gives you sight in the spirit, for example, you need to labor with the Holy Spirit to find out why he gave you sight. Do you know that it's possible that you go somewhere and there's somebody God is trying to reach. And you woke up one morning and found out that you could see an open vision. It means it's not a sleep mood. And then you can feel that it's a sign that you have advanced in the spirit. It may be that it is so that you can walk into an office and meet one man. Oh, I see in the spirit. This, 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 and this. Oh, Jesus is Lord. He gives his life to Christ. And after that day, the capacity for the open vision ceases. What would you likely begin to do? You begin to cry. Have I sinned? Oh, my gift has gone. Satan has attacked. No, it was given just to recover one. Your worry will be built out. And I'm speaking to someone. You know, because I was speaking in, you know, where I think two, two days ago, and I was trying to use an example that, you know, some people leave church and then when they go and they come back, we have to enter into a, the role of a Catholic father. And I was asking them, do you understand what the role of a Catholic father is? Is that you, we begin to take confessions. Now like one of them can go now and then he returns and he just left with five girls. And then as I was walking away that night, me, I was just saying, somebody said that I'm the one that he spoke about. I said, ah, that when I went, I actually slept with five people. When I'm not a prophet. If you love Jesus and you sincerely are compassionate about people, God will put their utterances in what you are doing. They will have real life answers. Are you with me? Okay. So you may be worried that the gift has disappeared. It may just be that the gift has perfected its errand. And so it's not necessary to continue to walk in that gift. Because the will of God is at the base of everything that is created. The will of God is at the base of every man that exists. The will of God is at the base of every gift that we enter into. The will of God. Somebody say the will of God. So your possessions, your existence, even the ministries that we are running, every true ministry is built on a will. And when the will has been accomplished, if the Lord says stop, please stop. That thing has no usefulness when the will has been perfected. That's the way it is. So what the Holy Spirit does is to show us the foundation upon which everything that is actually stands. That's how deep we can see so that we can partner effectively with God. When you begin to function in that knowledge of his will, I'm into my place now, you will find out that you cannot come into the full knowledge at once. And it is because of the overwhelming nature of the revelation of that will. So that Emmanuel, if Jesus gives you your next 80 years, you will balk. Ah. We, even if he tells you one year, you know, you know that. Uh, Lord, you have to help me. But if he gives you 80 years, you will not ask him for help. You just, is it me? Or Pastor Ori or me? And if you load that thing on Ori or me too, he will invite his wife, they will carry together and they will balk. So what he does is to administer that will in modules. In little, little measures. 
and so that we can relate with those measures and still sustain partnership with him come returning to him for grace imagine that you go to God once and say Lord for the next 80 years enable me it means if you receive supplies for 80 years you don't need to come around God again the attempt by God to make sure that you live a life that is totally dependent on him ensures that you are only giving your daily bread not your yearly bread or bread for a decade because why you come is that you need him why he wants you to come is that he wants fellowship are you with me so he won't tell you too much and I used to tell people sometimes he doesn't tell you one two three four five if there are five stages he tells you one and then you're excited then he tells you five then he tells you four then he tells you three and tells you two when you arrange it in the order of reception you will be a confused man even that disorganized expression is to create dependence because man is most optimized when he leans on another are you with me maybe one of these days i'll share with you the nine mandates of awcn and it took me like 10 years to organize because i had one and then i had eight and then i had three and i think i had nine so when i tried to arrange them and i saw that i now went to the lord to say something is missing and then he now began to bring other encounters and then i now had nine but i saw that even though i had nine i could not approach the nine because like i will show you each of the, the nine has an activating season that's their kairos that's why you must pay attention to your life and in trying to ensure that you meet up with the activating season there is a way you must live your life between the two activating seasons which is the chronos and then there are signs that you must watch out for that the natural passage of life is supposed it's about to bring me to the gate and so i must be more alert that's what we call the norm i'll show them to you if you miss any of them life goes a full circle because it's arranged You know when you draw a circle, you can draw a straight line. And the line is always said to be at a tangent. That's the word, to the line. Uh, so it's possible that you're supposed to travel. Once you miss it, you are given the privilege to come back. Sometimes the coming back is two months. Sometimes it's one week. Sometimes it's one day. Like it's time to meet the person you will marry. I know you like that one. And then you met the person and you abused the person. So the gate can be reopened. And then you meet the person the second day and you abuse the person. You now come the third day. The person now reacts badly against you too. They now check and find out two of you are not ready. So they now activate chronos for you. You now have a lot of experiences that damage, that damage, that damage. You now find out that it's the same person that you marry. You now sit down and ask questions like, but this guy was the wrong person. Both of you were wrong persons. And so God can take another five years to make you the right person and you now meet the person. And you see that you, both of you, now, the word is jail, Abi. Is it not jail, they used to say? Abi now, two of you will not jail together. Is it not jail? Yeah, yeah now. It means you... Will... There will be synchrony. You prefer synchrony to jail. Eh? Which one do you like? The two. Okay. It means, it means you will have arrived at a place of understanding. That's what I mean. You'll be so obsessed about this person. Ah! Say, but guy, you know be like this before. Say yourself, you wicked before. But Kronos has shaped you because you yielded to the process. Our lives in partnering with this will have been scheduled into or using a unit of measurement called time. 
What I'm doing in this part two of another Kairos is to speak to you on discerning the pillars of time. Scheduled into units of time. So let's look at um, Ecclesiastes 3.1. Um, so Jerry, you give me, when I'm done with this reading, I'll say something, we'll pray, and then I'll now focus on something slightly different, and then we'll join. Ha! How many years do I want to use to finish this thing now? Okay. It says to everything, somebody say everything. Now, it's not all things now. It means we have gone outside the boundaries of our curriculum. To everything, whether it is captured within the economy of God or it is outside the expressions of his economy, to everything there is a season, including the maturation of witchcraft activity. And that's outside the kingdom. Including the fulfillment of, of an ancestral curse. Including the, 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 the targeted heat of, uh, of, of, of a laser bomb or a missile. To everything, there is a season and a time to every purpose under heaven it's like a law that is being given it's like a law that is being given and you see the strength of a law is a principle this principle was built in Genesis chapter 1 don't go there it will take too much time verse 14 to 16 the principle was not just read as a principle. It was factored into the emergence of these earth illuminating bodies. We'll have stars. We'll have the moon. We'll have the sun in the firmament. And foundationally, they are governing structures. One will be ruling the day. One will be ruling the night. And then the stars will also be there. Let them govern for times seasons, days, and years. So they are markers. In this earth bodies, God hid the principle so that everything that functions within their sphere of government is regulated by time. And I'll share with my wife one day that if you are counting the structures in the earth, time is not one of them. Say what are stone, heat, time. No. Because time operates in a superior dimension. It governs all of them. Oh, the grass is brown, it's brown. We want it to be green. What do we need? Water. Bolu, except you know how to manipulate time, you will wait till, you wait till rainy season. And what regulates seasons is time. It means it's superior to water. A time has come, sorry, I'm using the word time again. A time has come for us to be very conscious of time frames. A few years ago, I was trying to share with us on longevity. And I said that if you are passing through, especially a kitty state, they used to, who is from a kitty state here? They used to live very long. You are just passing on the road, and when people die in a kitty state, it's billboard they used to use. They do it in those states too. I mean big billboard. Our mother, so-so person. You think it was a crusade. When you move close, you now find out it's a burial. And then you see ages like 130, 135. And so I began to run a query. What's this thing about? How is it that people exceeded 120? What did they find? Was it that they married a spirit? So I had to go back to the scripture that pegged 120. And I found out that the context was relevance and not earthly life. God was angry with man. The ability of man to affect creation is built into the seasons of his relevance. And so the Bible said that my spirit 
shall no longer strive with man because there was a spiritual technology by which God was doing business with men is called striving if God wants you to do his will he will endlessly weary you into his will that's what we call striving he will say wale 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 that's how he will be disturbing you have you found out that when God wants to move you into his will he schedules appointments for you so he now said remember my spirit somebody say my spirit if we had time we'll have checked into the implication of that statement because there was a how do I put it now there was experientially it was like the withdrawal of the Holy Ghost in a way in a way in a way he was still working with people but he worked with those people using another technology he was no longer striving my spirit shall no longer strive with man and it was because man had been discerned that he has a lot of affinity for wickedness but I will not abandon him his years shall be 120 days more ancient translation says that his years shall be days of 120 days of 120 days of 120 so the mystery of the new technology was locked in 120 when you hack 120 you find out that 120 means divine appointment well maybe coincidental even at the upper room the invitation was to 500 only 120 showed up to make you know that what they came to keep was a divine appointment so if you look from that point you see that there was no forceful relations with anybody genesis 12 so god approached to a certain idol worshiper and God said to Abraham, Get thee out of thy country, out of thy kindred, out of thy father's house, into a land that I will show you. That's not striving, it's an invitation. It means if you will really deal with God, you must know how to maximize seasons of visitation. Even when they were trying to evaluate how precious man was in the heart of God. The statement was still, what is man that thou had mindful of him, the son of man that thou visitest him. So because God will come visit him. He will come, he will say, Daniel, Daniel. He wouldn't wake you up too hard. And if you say, oh, well, 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 he will sleep. He really will drag you out of your bed, except you have given him that Lord against my will make me pray. And be careful to make such prayers. I met a young lady in this town. She went on a strange journey many years ago. I was in 40. And then returned back. After like, maybe like eight to nine months. Battered state. As I was walking out of church, she ran and fell at my feet. Hey, daddy, daddy, daddy. I've returned home. I've returned home. You know, some people don't. Prodigal sons have a witness so, that keeps them at home. Oh, I'll return, I'll return. I said, okay. He said, well, I can't pray again. I can't pray again. I said, let's hold hands. Lord, help her pray. She said that day, a hand, hot, literally dragged her off her bed. And the only he was to pray. She had series of visitations like that. A hand would just come out of the wall and boom. And then her face would be wide open. That's how those repeated visitations came until she found a smooth ground in the place of prayer. What licensed God to come against her will was, whatever it takes, help me pray. You know why it's difficult for some of you to stay? Your life is locked. One day we said, say you help me, even if I'm weak, just do what you want to do. You forgot. But God does not suffer amnesia time does not do anything to his memory he remembers if he does not keep his side of the covenant he will be forced to himself and so based on his integrity he keeps coming and may he keep coming oh may he keep coming 
The Bible says his days shall be days of 120. 120 is that number means divine appointments. So God will set up a meeting. And I've shared that many times. He's even walking on the road. It's been long since you prayed. And then you're riding on the bike and a car passes beside you. And you hear two lines of a worship song. That's how strong invitations are. You wake up in the morning, you are traveling. You did not pray. Because you just believe that. He's here, he's here, he's here, he's here. No steering. And then you get to the bike and the bike man picks a hymn. Have you seen bike men who sing hymns before? He's doing his own devotion too on the bike. And then he's whistling a song, he's whistling a song. And if you attend to the song, you are caught up. That's how it comes. It doesn't give up to well. But what you experienced on that bike was the will of God being delivered within a time frame. If you endure a song for long and you don't respond, the song will lose its power to bring you into fellowship. For some brothers, it's just 25 minutes in the barber shop. God has been waiting. If you yield, or, or maybe sisters who go to make their hair, and that's longer, two hours, or maybe playing Tokwe Alabi, and then you're just moving your head. The person is even telling you, sister, stabilize so that we can finish this thing. You didn't know that you were given the privilege to synchronize with that rhythm so that you could be carried. Sometimes you may be standing on a line and even though you have become prayerless, somebody begins to pray. No! That person was sent to you like a jumper cable. You know what a jumper cable does? Okay, you know what a salt bridge is. That's why the person came. That there are no charges in your battery. And what God has held out to you is a lifeline. What you are waiting for is not what will come. I'm teaching you that the technologies have changed. If you think God will be coming to knock your door every morning, this is how he knocks. He fixes seasons of appointment. Sometimes these seasons of appointment are not to an individual. They are to a whole congregation. They gather together and then God rests on one and interrupts everybody. And many times what we do is carry that one and we take that person out and say they should deal with that one and then we continue our journey of depravity. And if it's intentional, it picks another person and it picks another person and it picks another person. In those ancient churches, they were, it, was a, it was a woman's job. These old women who did not have all it took to be apostles or pastors, but had a secret relationship with Jesus, mastered how to interrupt services. She will walk from the back, and if you don't give her audience, she will sit here. I read of one that the women knew when God stopped speaking, and when it was the pastor speaking from his mind. And once God stopped speaking, it may be five minutes into the sermon, they stand, if you don't budge, they come and stay here. They, they sit down. And if you don't bow, they start crying. I mean crying in loud voice. And then if you don't give them attention, they will now publicly tell you, how is it that you don't know that God is not speaking through you? And if you have sins, you, you will confess your sins. Some people must return who can judge the utterances of God because we are back into those seasons of appointment. And what it means is that God has become desperate for recovery. And someone is interrupted already. It is good for a Samuel generation to get into the wisdom that is being, that is being administered now. Because Eli advised that he doesn't come again all the time. Maybe he has been trying to come. Your, your, his lifeline is a neighbor. A neighbor who wakes up in the morning and cannot tell you why they play worship songs in the morning. But I still want to sleep longer or in the middle of the night, the way he sleeps is that something must be playing. And he begins to play a sermon. He's not hearing the sermon. You are the only one who becomes sleepless. 
is because the great one is desperate that a day of recovery has come. You cannot be like Jerusalem. Because Jesus stood and began to weep. Jerusalem, Jerusalem. He was a city of prophets. It means, by city of prophets, it means you, you, you should understand how spirits work. But a dark season is upon you because you did not know the hour of your visitation. Is it possible that that thing that you trusted God to end can end now? Can you perceive his call? Can you perceive his call? And in this day, if you hear his voice, had it not your heart? Oh, he calls, he calls, he calls. He calls us from depravity. He calls unto purity. He calls unto righteousness. How can we hear and walk away from this day of salvation? Eliloria tiselosiata. Oh, that you will bless our hearts with discernment. Oh, that you will bless your church with discernment. Rademo mesosoya. Avalina moko koko koma kanina baratana. Sending on rest for the element of fire. Come for me, oh. scripture or maybe two we want to pray Psalms chapter 86 verse 11 listen to me because these meetings with God have been scheduled for time frames when the communications or the knowing of the will of God becomes a scarce reality many times the prayer is not God when will you come it's actually a cry for discernment Maybe he came and you missed him. Listen to me. And it's because, you see, 
he, he spoke to the lips of the prophet Jeremiah. He said, my ways are not your ways. It means, it's, it's not just that he comes. There is a way he comes that except a man has been too taught to understand those ways, you will miss him. <laughs> you will miss him. The whole nation of Israel in prophecy began to journey awaiting the coming of a Messiah but when he came they lacked the tools to recognize him oh there was news in the upper room that he had resurrected and then two of them had an assignment to a certain stay with me to a certain location called them house and as proofs because the Bible said in Acts of the Apostles that he showed himself alive unto them by many infallible proofs so he chose these two as witnesses to his resurrection and when he began to journey with them they lacked the tools to discern him he was he actually acted as though he was going straight it was by invitation but by the time they knew he had disappeared what Mary Magdalene she was a lady so devoted that even when every other one went away, she stayed at the tomb. But when he appeared, she mistook him for a gardener. Oh, gardener, show me where you have kept him. Because at our highest wisdom expressions, scriptures will still be true that his ways are not our ways. <laughs> so the psalmist had these prayer points that were clearly captured in his writings in Psalm 36 verse 11 he said teach me thy way O Lord I will walk in your reality unite my heart to reverence your name and your name here is the characters that you express bring me into the consciousness that this is God that came let me show you another one I think I have another one then we go to pray tonight we must go for so you are just my topic I, I can't enter that maybe on Tuesday yes Tuesday we will do discerning the pillars of time I want to show you clearly what Kairos what Kronos is and what Norm is so that we can know the seasons of our lives and we can adjust much more as the body of Christ so this can be another Kairos give me discernment that's what we're going to Psalm chapter 119 verse 33 that's another verse of scripture that I prayed with Psalm 119 verse 33 order oh is it this one verse 33 teach me oh Lord the way stay with me the way of thy statutes the word statutes there represents God's legal framework it means the hearing of his status does not bring a man into the experience of what is written. There are ways, there are protocols, there are principles. And I shall keep it unto the end. It means if you read scriptures to a man, if you tell a man this is the will of God for your life, until you can hack into the principles by which words become activity, you will not keep them to the end. I was sharing in emo the subject of the conference was holiness and, I, and after we had done two sessions very long sessions we need to break each of the sessions into maybe two sermons so we have like four sermons on the subject of holiness we were supposed to do a prayer walk yesterday morning and my son Benga came to me and said daddy I feel that you may be tired because of your long sessions can we do another teaching session I said okay and so I went to sleep. I told my wife because I was tired and I was ruminating on my bed. What do I speak about? The Lord said to me, you've taught a lot, but you can't know holiness if you have not met a holy God. There is a presentation that establishes or converts hearing to activity. You will meet me. So how do we meet you? He said, I have an agent that introduces my nature to men. You will need to know the Holy Ghost has the spirit of holiness. Isaiah chapter 6 started with a class, a visual class. But the way Isaiah got corrected in existence was a visitation. 
Something must leave the altar. Something must touch the man. Are you with me? Tonight you want to ask for impartations of discernment. Let this education become an impartation. That even if you come in a crowd, I will know this is you. Epilation, 
Jesus time. Teach us to maximize it. Teach us to recognize you. Oh God of our salvation. We are praying for this season. We engage. It's happening, it's happening. For now you understand that the Lord is here. Open your eyes. Church, open your ears. For now you understand. It's a prophecy, it's a prophecy. The Lord is here.
as we respond to God. Can we open our heart as we respond to God? To come into the experience of this river that brings cleansing to our sight. To the end that we can have upgrade of perception. 